I recently made a video on how to pass AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam in just three weeks. And one of the comments I got was very interesting, which goes, how do I apply and get a job after achieving AWS certification? So that got me thinking that there might be slight misunderstanding when it comes to understanding what are the benefits of AWS certifications and why we should do that. So with that in mind, and if you were to ask me, Romy, will I get a job after doing AWS certification? My simple answer is no, it's not enough. So welcome everyone. I'm Romy Patel and I currently work at AWS as an Associate Solutions Architect. In this video, I would like to cover why AWS certification alone won't be enough to land a job, but more importantly, what can we actually do to get that job? So first of all, Let's work backwards. Let's look at um, job description for an associate solutions architect at AWS and identify the skills and knowledge that you would require. If you look at the basic requirements, we can clearly identify that the role requires both technical and soft skills. During my interview, I was assessed on my technical knowledge, but equally I was assessed on soft skills such as time management, communication, team building. And if you're applying for any role at Amazon, you will be tested on the 16 leadership principle. You should get familiarized with that. And this would be the case with most companies where the interviewers will not only assess your technical skills, but will equally pay attention to your soft skills. So unfortunately, this is where AWS certification won't come in handy. The AWS certification will help you get versatile with AWS services and broaden your technical knowledge but for soft skills, you will have to look somewhere else. So let's get back to the basic requirements. So one of the ask is that you have understanding in one of the following roles, which includes um, cloud architecture, solutions architect, des system design, software development, infrastructure architecture, data engineering, or DevOps. Once again, AWS certifications falls a bit short here, as the certification will never tell you what the role entails and you will have to spend some extra time and resources into learning the responsibility about that position you're applying for. Don't worry, no employer will expect you to be expert. I was an expert on what AWS Solutions Architect entails, but they do like to see how interested you are. And that you show by doing a lot of research on what the role is all about and relaying that information during the questions that they ask you. Now, let's look at the preferred qualification. One of the asks is that you have some uh, experience working with AWS services, whether it's college-based project or work experience. Now, if you have experience working with AWS services, great. But if you don't, I would highly recommend getting started with some projects. An AWS certification is a great starting point for this as during your certification prep, you will probably watch a lot of tutorial videos. You will do good amount of hands-on lab, which will help you build practical skills. And because of this practical skills, you will able to implement any project on AWS with relative ease. Now, I won't bore you with uh, analyzing each and every single point from preferred and basic uh, requirements, but you get the idea that AWS certification is great from getting technical skills and experience working with AWS services, but it falls short when it comes to acquiring soft skills. And that is something you will have to work on your own and get the relevant skill set based on the position that you're applying for. At this stage, you're probably like, Romy, I get that AWS certification alone is not sufficient, but what can I do more to increase my success chance? So let's discuss that. First of all, build projects and put them on your CV. The more practical skills that you demonstrate in your CV, better your chances of getting past that first screening and getting that interview. Now, I've been where you are, and in some instances, I'm still where you are. So I understand the feeling that it's a lot of energy and effort um, to build those projects, and you might get the urge of YOLOing it. But trust me, it will help you so much in standing out when you're applying for any position. And if you're applying for an entry-level role, Nobody's asking you to build complex project. A simple one is more than enough. So your next question might be, how do I get the idea? Well, 
you don't have to come up with the idea on your own. You can go to this AWS site and choose the project that interests you. And there are so many to choose from. You, once you've picked a project, look at the problem statement. Try and find a solution or, on your own. But if you can't, just follow the step-by-step -step guide. Now you might ask me, what's the benefit of following a step-by-step -step guide and doing the project and then putting on your CV? Well, nobody's born expert. We have to take help when required, but you can take this process a bit further. Once you've implemented that project, start thinking about how you can improve it, whether it's from a reliability perspective, security, scalability, or whatever it is, or maybe it's just adding new features. If you have time, implement those ideas that you have. But if you don't, just think about them and write them down. So during an interview, try and relay this information in the questions that are being asked to you, because this will impress the interviewer as not only did you build that project, but you're also thinking about how to improve it. So that's an added bonus. Step two, attend AWS events. Now, AWS organizes several events um, at university or locally. So if you're a student, join an AWS club. If you don't have one, see if you can create or start one on your own. And I'm sure people will join that club. If you're already graduated, don't worry. You AWS organizes many events locally as well. You can find that information on AWS official LinkedIn page, or I'll try and drop some links in the description where you can find the event information. Just don't attend the events for the sake of attending them. Try and network with people. See if people are interested in becoming your mentor, because if they do, that would change your life. They will guide you in the right direction on how to get a skill set how to prepare for an interview. They will do mock interviews with you and they will be your greatest resource. So talk to people and see if they're interested. Third and final point, start preparing for your interview before you apply for a job. Now you might call me crazy, but hang on. I'm not asking you to research all the companies that you're interested in. I'm asking you to prepare and practice the most commonly asked questions and questions such as, Tell me about yourself or tell me about the time when you worked in a team and how was that experience? Questions like this. Now, if you're having a hard time coming up with these questions, don't worry. Go to this site. I'll leave the link in the description. Why there are so many strength-based questions and you can ask this yourself and prepare a format in which you will address these questions. So if you do this, it will help you in two ways. First, when you do finally land that interview, you will have more time to research about the company, the role that you're applying for, rather than spending time on practicing most questions like this. And secondly, because of the practice, you will be able to give concise and good answers. It will get rid of all the ums, the pauses and everything. And this will help you stand out immensely and it will increase your success chances. One more thing, once you have lined up an interview, please utilize this extra time you're getting by preparing for technical based questions based on the job description. Having technical knowledge and relaying that information to somebody else are two completely different skill sets and you have to get good at it if you wanna increase your success chances. So I hope you enjoyed this video where we talked about why AWS certification alone is not sufficient, but at the same time, what more can we do to increase our success chances? If you did, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I plan to create more videos around such topics. And if you're thinking about taking AWS certification exam anytime soon, and you're not sure how to prepare for it, watch my previous video where I tell you how to pass the exam in just three weeks. If you have any uh, comments and questions, leave them down below or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn or Instagrams. Links in the descriptions. So thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.